Hey everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkles with Glitter and I am here with a couple of card projects for you today featuring this Sparkle and Shine stamp set. This is from Neat and Tangled. I love the sentiment up at the top and it's also got some fun images that coordinate with it. I'm going to make a couple of different cards. They both are very different in the look but we're going to be doing watercoloring with my Zig Clean colors on both of them. So I open up my Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad and the first thing I do, of course, is get black ink on my thumb, but no worries. I'm just going to rub it in like it's some good lotion <laughs> and move on with my card project. I'm stamping these jewel images on just a regular post-it note and I'm going to cut them out because I'll be using them for masks on my project. Now a couple of them landed on the sticky part of the post-it note and a couple of them didn't. So I'm just adding some removable adhesive to the back of the ones that didn't happen to land on the sticky part. So now it's time to prep my watercolor cardstock. This is some watercolor cardstock from Tim Holtz or Ranger. And I'm going to take the larger of these two circle dies and trace a circle on it. I'm going to be creating a window on a front panel. And so I'm tracing this on this back piece of watercolor paper so I know where I can concentrate my stamping because this is going to sit behind that window. Now I'm stamping some of these jewel images kind of randomly here and there in some Versamark ink. You saw me prep the surface because I'm going to be doing some embossing. I'm going to be using some Judykin's like sparkle embossing powder is what I believe it's called. And so I've just stamped a few of those gem or jewel images all over and then I'm going to coat it with the sparkle embossing powder. Now, you can see that that has a little bit of glitter in it. You can see where my images are right now. And I'm not going to heat set this ju just yet. I'm going to go ahead and continue to do some of my stamping. So now I have the smaller gem or jewel here. And I'm inking that up also in Versamark ink and stamping it in various places around the circle. Now I'm kind of reorienting my stamp as I stamp. So I'm not stamping them all straight up and down. I'm kind of moving and turning them around. And you saw me add more embossing powder there to those smaller images and then I heat set it and that's what it looks like. These are gonna create an emboss resist technique but it's going to have that sparkle around the edge. So it's gonna be really fun. So I'm gonna continue stamping these gems in this circle and I'm masking off a few of them because I'm going to kind of layer them up so that I get some nice depth and what I'm my goal is really just to kind of really fill in the circle a whole bunch. It's not going to be solid jewels or gems but it's going to, going to have quite a few of these images within it and so it's kind of fun to use the masking so that some of them are in front and some of them are in back and you don't have the lines overlapping each other and making like weird shapes. So I'm just continuing to mask these off. Once again, I've done quite a bit of stamping here and now I'm just moving my masks to the bottom. I haven't added the embossing powder until just now, so I stamped several images before I added the embossing powder. Once again, I'm gonna go in before I heat set this and just stamp a few more times. This is just saving me a little bit of time. Once I put the embossing powder on, I can see where the images are and see areas where I need to fill in. And once I stamp again, I'm just gonna heat set that. So once I got my circle all filled in with the various gems and jewels and doing all the masking, it's all heat embossed, I'm going to take my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers and I am just going to scribble some color into these images. Now I'm kind of going around the circle and I'm varying the colors. I'm trying not to put two colors right next to each other. And you can see I'm not being very careful at all when I add the color because I'm going to come back in now with just a regular paintbrush and some water and I'm going to move that color around. This is going to give it that watercolor effect. Now you can definitely use these markers to color images solid. I've done it before and it works beautifully. They blend beautifully, especially on the smooth Bristol cardstock. But you can also watercolor with these because they are a water-based ink. And it's really fun to do this. And this is, I was kind of moving from gem to gem here and cleaning my brush off in between. And then I got smart and I decided to do all of the purple ones at once. And then I could kind of re-dip my brush and clean it off and then go through and do each of the different colors. Now, while these are still wet, if you feel like some of the images need more color, you can go back in with these Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. Because it's a real brush tip, that moist paper won't ruin the tip. And you just kind of scribble off the extra moisture onto a paper towel or a piece of paper. So I've gotten that all 
um, watercolored. And now I'm just cutting out my various pieces. I cut a piece of linen cardstock from the Essentials by Ellen Line and I with the smaller of the two circle dies. And now I'm taking both of these circle dies. I'm cutting them at once. I've kind of lined them up to where they're even space from each other and by cutting them both at once I create a little frame that fits perfectly around the window card front that I've created. So now it's time to work on my sentiment. I'm going to be using some vellum and heat embossing this. I wanted to use the same sparkle embossing powder but it has a clear base so I knew that that wouldn't show up very well on this vellum. So instead of using the Versamark ink to stamp this, I went ahead and used some Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment ink to stamp it on the vellum and that gave me a white base to go behind that clear based sparkle embossing powder and help, you know, made it show up on the, the vellum. So I got that all heat and boss and I'm now working on kind of assembling all of these pieces. I'm adding this frame onto that white linen card front that I created with the window in it. And now I'm laying my sentiment across that window, kind of figuring out where I want it. And then I'm just going to take my stylus and make some score lines right along the edge of that. Because what I'm going to do is fold this back behind this card front, but then I, once I folded it back, I'm going to take part of that tab and create a Z fold. So it comes to the front and I'm gonna cut these into a banner shape. And so it's kind of gonna give a dimensional banner to the to the sentiment. So it's I think it'll make more sense when I put it all together, but it's kind of gonna tuck behind and then come out. So you see, I have the tabs brought around to the back. I have that banner piece placed where I want it. I'm just putting a little tape runner adhesive on the back of this card front, and I'm going to take the tabs and just press them onto that. When I get this all put together, that banner is going to appear like it's coming out from behind, which it actually is. It's not just appearing like that. And in the finished card project photo, I think you'll be able to see that really cool effect. It's just a little something different. So now it's time to put this all together. I trimmed down my piece of watercolor cardstock. I took about a quarter inch off of each of those sides. I added a piece of fun foam to the back of this card front, and I'm using some Be Creative tape to adhere that onto this watercolor panel that I created. And then I created a little frame to go around this. Now, I didn't use a solid piece of gold glitter cardstock because I figured I could use the middle of that gold glitter cardstock for something else. So I just cut it to the size that I needed to be my mat and then I used a little rectangle die to cut out that center and I can use that little bit of gold glitter cardstock on another project. So to finish this card off, I've just gone ahead and embossed some more of those gems, watercolored them, and then I'm adding them onto the card front using a little bit of foam adhesive. And then of course I finished that off by adding some sparkling clear sequins as well and attached it to a white linen card base. So now let's move on to the second card project. This one's going to have a very different feel, but we're going to be doing some watercoloring again. So once again, I'm prepping the surface of my Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock with my EK Success powder tool. And I'm using this light bulb image. I'm stamping it in some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. And then I'm adding a little bit of clear embossing powder over the top of that just so that I don't have to wait for it to dry because I'm lazy like that. Now I could have hit it with my heat this tool. This ensures but... that I have a really dry image. So now I'm adding my colors. I have two different colors of yellow that I'm adding into this light bulb. Instead of using water this time, I am going to use my Wink of Stella Clear Glitter Brush Marker to blend these colors out and give it a watercolored look. But instead of just having plain watercolor, this is going to add a lot of shimmer to this image. It's just going to kind of create some more interest and really make that light bulb feel like it's shining. So as I started blending this out, I decided I wanted more of a halo around the outside of this. So I just went back and added some more color and I'm blending that out once again. And when I finally got that the way I wanted it, I decided that I had stamped that <laughs> light bulb off center. So I'm going to cut this cardstock down, but I'm going to use a stitched border die to do it. So I've just lined it up using my grid mat there, ran it through my die cut machine, and now I have that really nice stitched edge along the side of my card front. And my light bulb image is a little more centered than it was before. <laughs> so I went ahead and grabbed a couple of pattern papers I'm adding them onto this card front. These are both from the Basic Gray B-Side Pattern Paper Pad. And now it's time for my sentiment. 
Now I'm going to do a little bit of stamp surgery on a couple of these sentiments so that I can kind of create my own sentiment. Now it's nothing that is different in words, but I really love mixed font sentiments. So I decided to take the shine from this really scripty sparkle and shine sentiment that I used on the front card and the bright from the shine bright sentiment that's in block lettering and I cut them apart so that I can add these onto my card front. Now I was really afraid I was going to mess this up <laughs> and so I went ahead and pulled out my Misty tool and I just placed that stamp down onto my card front and picked it up with that folding hinged cover thingy my bob and then I went ahead and inked that up in some VersaFine Black Onyx pigment ink and I just swung that door open and then stamped it onto my card front. This is helping me get really good alignment because I can see where I'm positioning it on my card. And if for some reason I don't get it stamped really well, I can go ahead and re-ink and stamp again. And it will stamp in the exact same spot. So once I got the shine stamped on there, I'm going to line up the bright stamp and I'm going to ink that up in some VersaFine Black Onyx pigment ink as well and then close that lid to stamp that bright sentiment just below it and that helped me get a really good alignment on that combined sentiment and of course I can always use those as they were originally intended but cutting them apart also gives me a lot more options. So I went ahead and added some glossy accents over the entire surface of that light bulb and I allowed it to dry and then I came back in and I decided I wanted to add some little rays. Now you may think this was a mistake. I'm not real sure. I'm kind of on the fence about it, but <laughs> in the end it turned out okay. I added some rays around the top of that light bulb, blended them out once again with my Wink of Stella and then added a little bit of yellow shadow to that sentiment as well. And you can see the beautiful sparkle that I get on that. So that completes my card projects for today. As always, I will have links to all the products used in these projects in the description at YouTube, as well as over at my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com, where you can see more still shots and find more information. Thanks for stopping by today, and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.